If you have your Bible this morning, let me invite you to turn with me to three different passages of Scripture, actually. They're all found in Psalms. Uh, Psalms chapter 63, verse 6. Psalms 55, verses 16 and 17. In Psalms 46, verse 10, we'll go over those as we work our way through the message today. But if you'll turn to the book of Psalms, you'll be able to follow us this morning. I want to talk about how to spend time with God. And this morning, as you turn to the book of Psalms, I want to pray for us because I believe that this is one of the most foundational messages that that I could ever share with you today. Uh, some people say, you know, that's preaching to the choir. In other words, those are things that, that, that we all know about. But yet I have found in my Christian walk over the last 32 years and as being a pastor for the last 26 of those years that sometimes it's the foundational things that we need to visit and revisit along the way. So let me pray for us as we begin this morning. Father, thank you for your word today. We pray that you'd speak to us through these different passages in the book of Psalms. And Father, may you remind us, or maybe show us for the first time today, how important it is to spend time with you, and the different ways that we can spend time with you as well. Father, we love you. We pray these things in your awesome name. Amen. I want to share with you about spending time with the God of heaven every day. You know, one of the most amazing things to me, is that God loves to spend time with us daily. That can't be said of everyone. Not everyone wants to spend time with us every day. Not everyone is able to spend time with us every day. But think about it for a moment. The God of heaven who created the heavens and the earth, the God who is so awesome and so powerful, the God who has changed our lives, who gives us hope and forgiveness and love and everything else that is good, wants to spend time with us every day. We have a heavenly Father who loves to be with His children. He loves to be with you. He loves to be with me. He looks forward to those moments when we will simply meet with Him. And as I think about Christians along the way, those that I have observed from afar and those who I have observed from close, I have noticed something about them. Those who have developed a walk with God, they have learned the importance of what we call a quiet time. This is when we tune out all of the distractions, which are so many in our lives, and we get alone with God. It's when we spend time with Him and we unplug for a few moments from the world, if you will, and our responsibilities. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? And we connect with our Heavenly Father. You know, Jesus had so many things that were pulling on Him. He had hurting people who were sick, who wanted to be healed. He had 12 disciples who he was trying to mold. That sure wasn't an easy job. He had lost people who needed salvation. Their eternity depended upon him and and hearing about the gospel of Christ. He had a cross that was imminent. He had a lot on his plate that required his energy. But he understood that in order to meet all of these demands and, and many more, He would need the strength that comes from a daily appointment with the Father. In Mark chapter 1, Jesus teaches us that life will not slow down for us to get away with God. It will never slow down enough for us to be able to connect with Him on a regular basis. There will always be something pulling on us, something grabbing a hold of us always someone needing us. But in Mark chapter 1 and verses 35 through 37, the Bible tells us how Jesus did it. When the Bible says, Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And that was probably the case. But very early in the morning, Jesus awoke and he went to a place that was quiet. A place where, at least for a little while, no one could find him. And there he communed. There he connected with his heavenly father. It was Andrew Bonar, a great man of prayer, who had 
three rules that he lived by when it came to his relationship with God. Three rules I think that we ought to adopt today for ourselves. The first rule was this, not to speak to any man before speaking to Jesus. Every day that was his commitment. Before he spoke to anyone else, he made sure that he spoke to his Savior. The second thing was not to do anything with his hands until he had been on his knees. He made sure that prayer was a priority. Before he touched anything or, or did anything, he, he made sure that he was on his knees talking to his Savior. And the third thing was not to read the papers until he read the Bible. For us, it would probably be social media or to watch the news. But he made sure that he read the Word of God before he listened or, or he read the papers of that day. It was Peter Lord who said, Do you want to know how to become godly? Just hang around God a lot. That's all you have to do. If you want to be godly, then hang around God a lot. It doesn't matter what you think about today. In every area of life, if you want to become better, one of the ways that you can do that is to spend time with those who are farther down the road, if you will, in that particular area. If you want to become godly, just hang around God a lot. There are so many benefits in making time for God in our busy schedules. It's worth all of the sacrifice required to consistently get alone with Him. I mean, think about it today. Those, those moments with God, uh, nothing can take the place of them. Because when we have those moments with God and we spend time with Him, you'll notice one of the things that we will experience is God's power in our lives. His power will become fresh. His, his power will, will drive everything that we do. We will depend upon His power, that reserve in us, like never before. But we also experience growth. When we spend time with God, we're going to grow in Him. We will grow because we are experiencing the, the milk of the, the Word of God and the meat of the Word of God. We will experience intimacy. Our relationship with Him is going to become closer. It's, it's going to thrive like never before just because of the time that we spend with Him. There will be an awareness, an awareness of what is around us, aware, an awareness of our sins, an awareness of needs of, that people have, an awareness of where God is moving and working and where He wants us to join Him there will be a, a trust that will become stronger where we, we, where we will trust God like never before. We will trust Him because we know Him better. And there are multiple ways in which uh, those moments will, with God will do great things. I believe that if we're going to implement spending time with God, then we must have some measures established. And so this morning, I, I want to talk in a very practical way about three different things that, that come to mind, three different measures that I believe that need to be in place as we think about spending time with God. And I believe there are questions that we need to ask and to answer as well. The first one is this, when we think about spending time to get with God, the first question we must ask is, where to meet God? Where to meet God? Here in Psalms chapter 63 and verse 6, the Bible says, when I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. We must decide where we are going to meet God. Where is the best place that you can spend quality time with Him? You'll notice that the psalmist would close his door to his bedroom and he would enter the presence of God. For the psalmist, this was the best place in all of the world that, that he could spend time with his heavenly Father, unrushed time, unhurried time, uninterrupted time. It was there that he would meet with God. He tells us until late into the evening, he would lie on his bed and he would commune with his Lord. It was Vance Havner who had that great quote when he said, if you don't come apart, you will come apart. 
And how true that is. If you don't come apart from all of your responsibilities and meet with God, then eventually you will come apart. Where do you meet God? Where do you spend time with Him? Notice the psalmist in verse 6. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. He will meet with you anywhere. There's not a place where we do not find the, the presence of God. I mean, we can meet with God at any place. He will meet us anywhere that, that we're willing to meet with Him. But is there a location that you go to over and over again to get alone with God? Because we have to answer the question, where to meet God? And I would say today, there are a couple things that, that we need to keep in mind. The first thing is that it needs to be a quiet place. Now, that is a, a great challenge right there. We need a quiet place where, where we will not be bombarded by all of the things that are going on around us. Where is a quiet place where, where you can meet with your Heavenly Father on a regular basis? But not only a, a quiet place, but, but I would say that it needs to be a regular place. It needs to be a quiet, regular place, a place where you can go and you can connect with God on a regular basis over and over again. Making a place to meet with God may take a lot of creativity. You may have to really think about that today. You may have to really work on this as you think about where you can meet with God, but it will be worthwhile. It is sometimes hard to find a location, but where can you go and best encounter God? As I think about that, Moses had to go to extreme measures. In Exodus chapter 19, we find where Moses would meet with God, and it was not in his room, but it was on the top of a mountain. Sometimes you'll go to extreme measures to, to get away from everyone so that, that you will be with God. But the Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 19, in verses 19 and 20, these words, And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered by his voice. Then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain and Moses went up. Moses had a specific place where he met God. He went to the mountain. He had to go to the top of the mountain. He had to get very creative. But guess what? It was worth every step to get to the pinnacle of that mountain because there the presence of God would meet with him in a powerful and a fresh way. Someone wrote the poem, Alone with God. And in that poem, they wrote, When the storms of life around me beating, when rough the path that I have trod, within my closet doors retreating, I love to be alone with God. Where is the place that you meet with God? Would you begin to ask God to show you a good place to get alone with Him? It may be at home. It may be in your living room. It may be in your rocking chair. It may be at your kitchen table. Uh, for me, I, I love sitting on our front porch in a rocking chair with a cup of coffee and my Bible open and, and, and letting God speak to me. It may be on your lunch break. The main thing is that we have a place to meet Him. The question is, where to meet God? But secondly... The question is when to meet God. Here in Psalms chapter 55 in verses 16 and 17. The psalmist says, As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon I will pray and cry aloud, and He shall hear my voice. The psalmist was very committed to spending time with the Lord. And he made it clear that he would meet with God in the morning he would meet with God in the middle of the day. Notice he said he would meet with God in the evening. 
In fact, in Psalms chapter 5 and verse 3, the Bible says, My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. In the morning he spoke to God. And at noon, in our text, he spoke to God. In Psalms chapter 141 verse 2, the psalmist says, Let my prayer be set before you as an incense, the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. And so here we find in the morning he spoke to God. During the day he, he met with God. During the evening he connected with God. And Dillard said how we spend our day days is of course how we spend our lives. And as we think about that today, the way that we spend this day with God will essentially determine how we spend our lives and the habit, the good habit of connecting with our Heavenly Father. You'll notice here in our text again in Psalm 55 in verses 16 and 17, he says, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Look what he says in verse 17, evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud and he shall Hear my voice. I believe that we need to set a time to meet with God every single day. This will help us from allowing many of the things around us to interrupt our time with Him. Because here we find the psalmist in the morning, at noon, in the evening. He made sure that he connected with his heavenly Father If he would not have made this a commitment, if he would not have been intentional, then everything around him would have dictated his life and his schedule, and he would have never found the time to be able to get back to communicating with his Heavenly Father. Making time for God may well be one of our greatest challenges. It may be one of our greatest difficulties. Nevertheless, it is vitally important to our growth. It is vitally important to our survival. We will never be very intentional to make sure that it occurs until we get to the point where we are desperate for Him. And so I want you to think about when to meet God. And I would say there are four factors that we need to keep in mind this morning. The first thing I would say is schedule it. I think you have to schedule it just like you schedule a lot of things in your life. You have a a calendar. You have somewhere where you write down appointments. We have to schedule our time with God. Whether that be in the morning, whether that be during the day, whether that be in the evening, is totally up to you and and to the Lord. But I think we ought to schedule it. We ought to write it down like an appointment that, yes, at this time, every day, I have a commitment. I have an appointment. And because of that, when someone wants us to do something at that time, our response is real simple. I'm committed at that time. I'm not able to meet at that time. And we keep our appointment with God. We must schedule it. Secondly, we must keep it. We must keep it. We must hold on to it. We must not let it fall through the cracks and through our fingers. We must keep it. Thirdly, we must protect it, which is very similar. We must protect that time with God. Everything and everyone wants your time. Everything and everyone wants those minutes, those moments. And we must get to the point to where We protect that time with God, however long it may be that we have carved out to spend with Him. We must schedule it. We must keep it. We must protect it. Listen, we must cherish it. We must cherish it. What we will find is that we will long to be with Him. We will look forward to be with Him. We will have no problem scheduling it and keeping it and protecting it because we cherish it so much. We will want to be with Him. We will carve out whatever needs to be carved out so that we can be with our Heavenly Father. It was Anne Morrow Limber who said, It is a difficult lesson to learn today. To leave one's friends and family and deliberately practice the art of solitude. And yet when it is done... I find there is a 
quality to being alone that is incredibly precious. Those moments of solitude, maybe not an all-day affair with Him, maybe not even a, an hour uh, time with Him, but those minutes, those moments are so crucial to where we realize that, yes, we need to meet with God. Have you noticed that there are so many time stealers? Uh, some of them can be managed and others are just a part of life and, and part of our responsibilities. But may we only let the emergencies interrupt our daily appointment with our Heavenly Father. I'm reminded of Daniel this morning. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, we find that he loved to meet with God. And the Bible tells us, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Here we find Daniel. Here we find him committing to God. He knew when he was going to meet with God. Three times a day he prayed. Three times a day he gave thanks before his God. Now, Daniel, no doubt, was a busy man. But he understood the importance of letting God renew his soul. He was committed to sharing his time with the Lord. The question is, when can you meet with God? Is it early in the morning? Is it sometime during the day? Is it late at night? What will need to be eliminated so that you can put a quiet time in place? If we are honest and look at how we spend our time, we will be able to interact with God every single day. We must realize where to meet with God. We must realize when to meet with God. But there's a, a third factor, I believe, that is so important for us today, and it's the, the how question, how to meet with God. Because here in Psalms chapter 46 and verse 10, the psalmist says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. I believe that it is especially important to have a plan when we meet with God. There will be times when, when God will show us that our time will need to be spontaneous. It will need to be unstructured, and, and God can, can choose to lead us in, in that way. But most of the time, a plan will help us to stay on course. And we've talked about some of the things that, that we can include in our time with God, but I want to highlight three of those areas as we close today. And the first one is this, it's prayer. That whenever we spend time with God, one of the most powerful things that we can do is to talk to the God of heaven and to listen to Him talk to us. And as you think about prayer, one of the, the acrostics that I love to, to pray by is the acrostic ACTS, A-C-T-S. And as you think about that acrostic, the A stands for adoration. Adoration is when we, the first part of our prayer, we recognize God's greatness. We recognize how awesome He is. We don't jump right into a, a prayer of praying for ourselves, but we, we start off by recognizing that God is truly an awesome God. And the C stands for confession. We move from adoration to how great God is to, to confession. We begin to, to recognize our sins. We begin to recognize our shortcomings and we confess those things to Him. And then the T stands for thanksgiving, where we thank God with a heart of gratitude for His multiple blessings in our lives. I mean, what a beautiful thing to be able to pray and, and to say, God, thank you for my family. Thank you for my spouse. Thank you for my children. Uh, God, thank you for my job. God, thank you for my church family. God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sometimes the best thing we can do is to say thank you, even when things may be very hard. 
and in supplication as we lift up the needs of others and, and we think about the needs that we have in our lives as well. In Matthew chapter 6 and verses 8 through 13, the Bible says, Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of the greatest things we can do is to pray adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication kind of prayers. We ought to pray when we spend time with God. Secondly, I think about Bible study. One of the beautiful things we have is the Word of God. It's been preserved from generation to generation to generation. And as we think about Bible study, uh, what comes to mind is Scripture reading. To be able to, to read God's Word, sometimes we may want to read through a, a book of the Bible. Right now I'm reading through 1 Timothy. Just finished reading through Philippians. And so you may want to read through a, a book of the Bible. Uh, you may want to read about a topic that's found in the Bible. You, you might want to read about a person in the Bible. But there are many ways that, that we can be a part of, of reading God's Word. I think about Scripture reading. But not only Scripture reading whenever we have Bible study, but Scripture memorization. To take God's Word and to memorize His Word is a beautiful thing. I, I'm not a quick person when it comes to memorizing, but my goal is to memorize at least a verse a month. Now, I know some of you are you're way farther than I am, but to memorize just a verse a month. You know, over the course of a year, that's 12 verses. And you begin to multiply that over the course of many years. That's a lot of scripture that God places in our hearts. But start somewhere. Start memorizing God's Word. Take a verse and begin to learn just phrase by phrase. And to begin to think about what God is saying. Bible study involves scripture reading. It involves scripture memorization. And one of the things I like to do with scripture memorization is what leads to scripture meditation. Because God wants us to meditate on His Word. Meditation is to, to think about it, to, to consider it, to allow it to captivate our minds throughout the day. To begin to think about that verse or those verses and those phrases that we find in Scripture. And to be able to really think about those things and how it impacts our lives. I love the aspect of prayer when we meet with God. I love the aspect of Bible study and then there's a third thing, and it's worship. Yes, you can sing as you worship with Him. You can praise His name. You can celebrate as you meet with God. These are just some of the things that we can include in our quiet time. God may show you other methods to help you to draw closer to Him. But at the end of the day, James 4, 8 rings loud to us, which says, Draw near to God. And He will draw near to you. May we find a plan that works and stick with it. And I say this morning, if, if your plan brings you close to God, then you have discovered a good plan that we can adjust along the way. May God help us in our pursuit to have a deeper, more passionate more meaningful relationship with Him. Let us become more like Him as we get to know Him better. May we know where to meet God. May we know when to meet with God. And may we know how to meet with God as well. As we close this morning, I believe there are some ways that, that we should live this out. I believe there are some ways that we ought to live this out in, in real life. And so the first thing I would say this morning is this. Evaluate your time with God. Evaluate your time with God. Do you have a place? 
Do you have a time? Do you have a plan? Do you, do you have any of those? Maybe you have a, a place, but you're not real consistent on the time and the plan. And maybe today God is saying you, you really need all of those factors. If you have a, a place and a time and a plan, do you need to make some adjustments? Do you need to, to make some adjustments to what you are doing when you spend time with God? And if not, no time is better than the present. Maybe this morning God is saying to you, that's something that is so important that, that you need to do on a very regular basis. And so this morning, would you evaluate your time with God? We know what the psalmist did, and, and we know what Daniel did. We know what Jesus did. But as you think about your time with God, is there a place and a time and a plan where you meet with your Heavenly Father on a regular basis. And so evaluate your time with God. Secondly, I want you to make a commitment. I want you to set a goal. Now, seven days a week would be a beautiful goal, but it's just like exercise or anything else that we think about. Maybe you need to set some small goals. Maybe you need to say, Lord, I'm, I'm go my goal this week is to spend three days with you, three mornings with you for a certain amount of time. Or, Lord, maybe this week I, I want to try to spend five mornings with you for a certain amount of time. Would you set a goal and say, Lord, we, we can build from there. But, Lord, this week my goal on these mornings, I want to spend time with you. Lord, this is the place where I'm going to go. Lord, this is the time I want to meet with you. And this is the plan that I have as I meet with you on those mornings. Would you set a goal? Would you make it a priority? Would you put it on your calendar, put it in your phone, and say, Lord, this is the schedule that I want to keep? And then the third thing is this as we close. Seek to know and obey God. Can I remind you today that the goal when you meet with God and I meet with God is not just information. I know a lot of really smart Christians. God hasn't called us to be just really smart Christians. The goal is not only information, but transformation. God wants to transform your life into Christ's likeness. He, he wants you to be more like His Son. And so when you read His Word, when you pray, and whenever you worship Him, the goal is to become more and more like Christ. Would you seek to know and obey God? Not just to know His Word, but to live out His Word through His power. And then pursue a, a greater relationship with your Father that essentially leads to life change, to be more like Christ. And so, as we close today, would you evaluate your time with God? Would you make a commitment, and would you seek to know and obey God? This morning, perhaps you've never trusted Christ as your Savior and Lord. That's the first step for you. That's, that's first base. That's the, the first thing on the list. And so, this morning, prayer is so critical. Did you know that you can call out right now to the God of heaven who loves you so much, who sent His Son to the cross over 2,000 years ago and gave His life for the world. And He can forgive you of every sin that you have committed, are committing, or will commit in the future. If today you have made a decision, if today you want to make a decision, I want to encourage you to do something I want to encourage you to reach out to me by going to fbcy.com. And I want you to look at the very top left hand of the page and, and see a tab that says who we are. And I want you to email me as the pastor. And I want to hear from you so that we can help you follow up in your decision. May you commit today to spend time with God. May you know where and when and how may God do great things in and through your life. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the power of a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray for all Christians watching today, Lord, that you would help us to find a way each and every day to spend time with our Heavenly Father. Father, for those who have or want to trust you as their Savior Father, may they reach out to us today. 
May they share their need for Christ, how they want to become a Christian. Father, thank you for the work that you are doing in and through every single one of us. We thank you for it. It's our prayer. We ask it in your name. Amen.